ओके so yesterday we wrote that relation between volume strain can you read out that formula what we wrote yesterday yes sir uh, sir we did till uh, poisson's ratio hmm in that what is the last formula we wrote um uh, sigma is equal to minus uh, uh, delta d by d by delta l by l After that, uh, then a wire of length L uh, has a volume V. Uh, so yes, sir, that one is two uh, into minus sigma uh, delta L by L plus delta L by L. Volume ratio delta V by V is equal. We are not reading uh, the exact formula what I gave you. I think we gave the last formula this one. Yes, sir, uh, that one only. Uh, delta V by V is equal to. Uh, Delta V by V is equal to one minus two sigma into delta L by L. Yes, okay. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine. Okay, 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 okay. What is the number, sir? Ah, uh, three four, sir. This one, it's still three four. The last one. Okay. So from the formula, sigma is equal to minus of delta d by d by delta l by l correct yes sir no yes sir yes sir so delta d by d by delta l by l yes sir and we can get sigma equal to y by 2n minus 1 what is y n modulus yes n sir rigidity modulus mm -hmm. Poisson's ratio, Young's modulus and Lewis modulus are related by the formula sigma is equal to y by two n minus one. Even uh, we have yes, between y n and k, all are important. Derivations are not there even in plus two. Even for you also, it's not there. Okay, ma? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am giving the relations. You just note it down. Relation okay. between y, n, and k. So it is nine uh, by y is equal to one by k plus three by n. Y is the yes, sir. Is the rigidity modulus? N is the bulk modulus. So it is, yeah. If you take n plus three k by n k, correcta? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So y will be nine n k by n plus three k. Yes, sir. And from the same relation, you can write y is equal to two sigma. Sorry, two n. This formula into one plus sigma, and y is equal to three k. Into one minus two sigma, and lastly, sigma is equal to three k minus two n by two into n plus three k. So these are all the relations. You must have the knowledge of them. Please note down. Yes, sir. Sir, sir, uh, this is Ramdev. Sir, sir, could you please uh, 
explain the three modular exercises one is so what do they represent modulus y normally it comes for uh, change in length n is the rigidity modulus change of shape k is the bulk modulus related to change in volume in yesterday's class all of these uh, moduli are explained one day yes sir just hear that class once okay yes sir yeah you will get an idea still if you have doubt you can call me today itself yes sir So these are all the relations between the moduli and Poisson's ratio. Done, sir. Done. Sir. Good. Done, sir. Next. <coughs> breaking stress next to side heading stress means restoring force per unit area correct yes sir breaking yes sir means the stress to be impressed in the wire uh, at the uh, at the instant of which it simply breaks even though it is it may be highly elastic but it breaks due to the abnormal uh, stress developed in it uh, in the body so that is called as breaking stress so the breaking stress is given by Breaking force by cross sectional area so <clears throat> suppose if a thick wire suspended from a ceiling breaks due to its own weight. No additional weights are applied on it. It is breaking only due to the own weight. So then stress is equal to breaking force by area. Breaking force is nothing but the weight of the wire itself. By area. So here W is equal to mg, m is equal to volume into density into g, v is the volume, m is the mass. So this is equal to A into L into rho into g. A is the cross sectional area. Cross sectional area multiplied by length will give you volume. Length. Rho is the density. 
so the breaking stress is now given by a l rho g by a therefore the breaking stress is l into rho g from this we can write maximum length of the wire which can hang freely from the ceiling without breaking is l max is equal to sb by rho g simple okay yes sir not just correct yes sir yes sir Have you noted? Yes, yes sir. Hmm. Till last. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the factors on which S B depends. so first and foremost one it depends on the nature of the material of the wire for example steel can bear maximum stress than aluminum of same length and same cross section and aluminum can bear more stress than Uh, lead wire of same length and cross section like this it depends on the nature of the material and it is independent of length and cross section area <clears throat> so this is about the breaking stress then we have the behavior of a wire under increasing load is there that is also very very important the strain energy is there those two also we'll discuss so the next behavior of a wire under increasing load we will take a percentage strain percentage strain means change in length by original length into 100 and on y axis we will take stress <clears throat> up to set a maximum value of stress the wire strictly obeys hooke's law so the stress strain graph will be a straight line therefore let us call this limit as a a is called as
proportionality limit means if the stress is more than a then the wire will no longer obey hooke's law it will be elastic but it won't follow hooke's law that is stress impressed varies directly as the strain produced that is the hooke's law so that won't uh, be valid after this point a a is the maximum stress beyond which the wire deviates from hooke's law a very important point next after that if the stress is further increased then the linear relation between stress and strain will disappear but the wire will be exhibiting elastic properties so therefore b is called elastic limit the maximum stress up to which the wire exhibits elastic properties that is called as elastic limit then beyond that if i increase the stress so for a little stress the strain will be more and somewhere at any point c if you remove the stress normally at a if you remove the stress strain also disappears and the graph goes to zero even at b also if your stress is withdrawn the strain also disappear and graph goes back to o means the wire is getting back its original dimensions exhibiting elasticity but beyond b we need not go up to that extent somewhere at this point c if you withdraw the stress then the wire is left with some permanent strain means whatever uh, deformation is produced in the wire will remain permanently in it that is the shape and size are not restored the body will remain in its new dimensions therefore this o o1 so here uh, ob explains elastic behavior of the wire and then o o1 is defined as the permanent set this permanent set explains plastic behavior why it is called permanent set because even the after the withdrawal of stress the wire is set permanently in the new dimensions the original dimensions are not restored hence it is called permanent set this permanent set will explain the plastic behavior of the wire that is the change in shape and size becomes permanent which is nothing but the plastic behavior then after that if you still increase the stress the wire becomes more and more thin and somewhere at the point d the wire simply breaks so bd explains the plastic behavior and d is called as fracture point or breaking point okay so these are uh, some important points when you deal with the wire kept under increasing load initially up to a maximum value of stress represented by a the wire no doubt is uh, strictly obeying the hooke's law means stress varies directly as strain hence it is called as the proportionality limit after a if you increase the stress further the wire is not obeying hooke's law that is stress is not directly proportional to strain but the wire is exhibiting elasticity up to b if you withdraw the stress 
strain also disappear but stress strain relation linearity relation between stress and strain will disappear <laughs> so that proportionality behavior is lost but elastic behavior is retained up to b hence b is called as elastic limit so this o2b in the graph will explain the elastic behavior beyond that if you increase the stress further then the change in shape and size produced in the body will per become permanent means even if the stress is made zero the body will remain permanently in the new dimensions that is the body is set permanently in the new dimensions that is body is set to permanently set in the new dimensions which explains the plastic behavior beyond that if you increase the stress further somewhere at a critical stress critical value of the stress d the wire simply breaks it becomes more and more thin and finally it breaks so here uh, ob is elastic behavior bd is the plastic behavior and d is the fracture point or breaking point so this is how we can study the uh, variation or variation of uh, strain with respect to stress then in this if some more conclusions if the length of the portion of the graph between b and d is more then the wire is said to be highly ductile so you got a new term ductility ductility is the property by virtue of which a material can be drawn into thin wires so the property by virtue of which a material can be drawn into thin wire is called ductility and this property is used in making ornaments platinum gold silver copper aluminium etc we use the property ductility only in uh, making them to wires and we have even another property called malleability so it can be made into thin sheets this is used in gold covering the shrines of the temples and all so this is about the behavior of a wire under increasing load and even we have <laughs> i'm just searching any more points are left i think we covered all okay and one more raya yeah. another last point is there elastomers 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 means the materials the 
with very low Young's modulus, which can have more strain. They are called as elastomers. Means these elastomers can be drawn into thin wires without breaking. There'll be wide gap between the plastic limited break fracture point or breaking point. So for a little stress, more strain is produced. The examples are natural rubber, even uh, synthetic rubber rubber like plastics and elastic tissues they're all elastomers and they have very low value of Young's modulus for example steel Young's modulus will be 2 into 10 to the power of 11 Newton meter to the power of minus two. Whereas uh, this natural rubber or synthetic rubber, they have the elastic uh, constant or Young's modulus equals to three into 10 to the power of five Newton meter to the power of minus two. Means see, 10 to the power of six times less than that of steel. So very, very low. They have very low value of the Young's modulus. Those are called as uh, elastomers. And then we have elastic after effect. Normally, according to the graph and the definition, if you remove the stress still here, strain should immediately disappear. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If you withdraw the stress, strain should also become zero. So ideally, strain should become zero for the zero stress. Now you take the example of rubber ball. You hold it in your hands. Press it at the top and bottom, you will find some deformation. Yes or no? Find... Yes, sir. Yes. Then you remove the fingers and keep it on the table. Will it take some time to get back its original size or not? Yes, or sir. As and when you withdraw the fingers, immediately it gets the spherical shape. Yes, sir. Will there be time delay or it is instantaneous? Instantaneous, sir. Huh? Time delay. There will be some time delay. Yes, sir. It may be less, but instantaneously strain will not disappear as and when the stress is withdrawn. There will be some delay for the body to regain the original dimensions and that time delay uh, <coughs> in getting the original uh, dimensions back after the stress is withdrawn that is called as elastic after effect please write the definition <clears throat> the time delay in regaining the original dimensions the time delay in regaining The time delay in regaining the original dimensions 
after the time delay in regaining the original dimensions after the stress is withdrawn after the stress is withdrawn is called is called the elastic after effect you can also say it as that is strain lags behind the stress and we have one more word even human beings will experience pampered dogs will experience so elastic fatigue elastic fatigue means please write the definition the temporary loss of elastic properties the temporary loss of elastic properties by a material the temporary loss of elastic properties by a material subjected to stress <clears throat> subjected to stress for long periods of time for long periods of time is called elastic fatigue is called elastic fatigue <clears throat> so normally the bridges after using them for 80 years or 100 years they are declared unsafe when a government law so when a, the first cotton built godavari railway bridge is declared unsafe and they constructed two new bridges yes sir no yes sir yes sir yeah because uh, it lost its elastic properties so it won't be able to keep on bearing stress continuously for more time normally whenever the trains pass this way that way stress is there continuously throughout the day that too with increased number of trains <laughs> so once it loses the elastic properties temporarily or permanently and if the stress is further implied on it naturally it tends to break so the bridge may collapse so to prevent the collapse of the bridge and avoid the accidents they declared the bridge unsafe and they removed similarly buildings after uh, crossing certain age they declared unsafe and they demolished the buildings <laughs> so like this fatigueness is the temporary loss of elasticity by a body subjected to stress for longer spans of time for human beings lady pustakal is resi panel is resi daggar la ullu vaalu nithi meedu alagu peeki ilaadu pallu ni chestunnam manu human beings alage you just have a pampered home dog you tie it and keep on beating it sees the season after one day it bites you this i this are all human beings as well as animals even the domesticated animals including owl gani owl pail gani gedul gani vanni kuda they exhibit that uh, fatigueness if they are uh, strained more than the limits normal limits <laughs> so not only non living materials even living people are living creatures also will exhibit this the temporary loss of elasticity by a body which is subjected to stress for more length of time that is called as elastic fatigue so you can uh, just mention the reason is <clears throat> right in the next slide <clears throat> if the body is if the body is allowed to relax for some time if the body is allowed to relax for some time then the strained and displaced molecules then the strain that displaced molecules of the body then the strain that displaced molecules of the body 
will go back to their original positions will go back to their original positions and restore elasticity and restore elasticity <clears throat> okay yes sir and one more factors affecting the elasticity first one is annealing so this is uh, keeping on hammering uh, hitting the material with the uh, hard objects etc etc will uh, reduce the elasticity next impurities so there are two things elastic constant of pure metal is less than the elastic constant of impurity then elastic elastic constant will increase Hmm. vice versa if the elastic constant of pure metal is more than the elastic constant of impurity then the elastic constant will decrease so next is temperature so elastic constant decreases with rise in temperature of course there is a steel called inva steel that's why it is used in making all the bridges and all its elastic property elastic constant is independent of pendulums pendulums of the pairs clocks they were all made with inva steel because the elastic constant is independent of temperature okay yes sir yes sir maths class undamma anaka yes sir undi sir eppudu ippudena ha avun sir okay then tomorrow we will continue okay okay sir the strain energy okati undi then simple models of problems we can try okay sir so one day yes sir you just see the yesterday's uh, uploaded class yes sir and any doubts today itself you can call me i am free only yes sir okay yes sir fine vamsi yes sir okay take care bye thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir